Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us once again. The Atheist Experience is live October 26, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perry is my co-host, as afternoon. always. And we are back. This show is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown on 5th Street, 307 West 5th Street, between Guadalupe and Lavaca except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series in the mayor's room of the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. Uh, our next lecturer, who will be um, next Sunday. Yes. Yes, will be uh, Dr. James D., a uh, retired UT classics professor who will be talking all about the subject of uh, how it is that, uh, you know, uh, just modern scientific discoveries. Yeah, embryology, uh, fossils, and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Just whittling away at you exactly. know, the, the need to believe in the supernatural. So. Yeah. Uh, it should be very entertaining uh, and informative, and uh, among other things that we do in our group, of course, is Godless Gamers meets every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser, and ACA Happy Hour is a Thursday evening little get-together at Antonio's Tex-Mex uh, near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. Uh, it started that, generally speaking, tends to start around 7.30ish or so, but people trickle in all night long. Uh, so it's a big, boisterous table full of uh, loud folks, and, uh, and and that's a lot of fun. Okay, uh, nonprofits. The nonprofits is our biweekly internet audio show. I've I've been chastised a few times. It's not radio. It's internet audio. Yeah. I always thought it was internet radio. I, I think that's kind of the original thing matter? that we had, we had listed it as. But yeah, but yeah, I mean. It technically is yeah, not because radio. internet radio stations, <laughs> though. Oh, I mean, it's not radio, radio, but I mean, r internet radio stations just like to call themselves radio. Is that? Uh, I mean, sh I, I, they I, all be smacked down? Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh well, anyway. I, don't, I don't deal with terminology of the internet. So. It's our radio show, <laughs> damn it, and uh, that's on the internet biweekly at atheistnetwork.com. Every other Saturday from two to three thirty p.m. And uh, the the next up, uh, last episode was yesterday. And uh, it is already up on our website on the radio show page for download if you missed the live feed, mm -hmm. and along with about the last half dozen or so episodes. And the next show will be on November the 8th, I do believe that is. Yep. Uh, so two Saturdays, hence, will be the next nonprofits, and that's uh, Jeff D., uh, Russell Glasser, and whoever else happens to turn up at Russell's house, I guess, either Karen Glasser or Jeff Jones or whatever. Uh, the University Atheists and Agnostics, a uh, registered UT student organization for unbelievers, uh, in now in its third semester. And I believe that they are hooking up with the Campus Free Thought Alliance uh, through... Yes, I know that they had some meetings back and forth. Um, yeah. I think there was talk of possibly a debate or something like that, but I, I don't yeah. think anything really official has been yeah. done. Okay, but anyway, I, but anyway, it is uh, the first really successful UT student and faculty organization for atheists. And if you want more info about them, if you are a UT student or faculty member, go to studentorgs.utexas.edu slash UAA. Their meetings are every Friday at 4 p.m. in Garrison 200. Okay, so much for that. Uh, a couple other announcements, I think. Uh, the big, evil, horrible, satanic uh, Halloween holiday is coming up, uh, which we all love, and it's, <laughs> but not for that reason. It's just because it's cool, and it's an excuse to eat candy and watch goofy movies and have fun. Uh, all of which we will be doing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Halloween night, uh, there will be... Uh, Karen Glasser is uh, is putting together another trick or canning drive, yep. which they did last year and gathered about 100 pounds of food. What they do is they get all in costume, but instead of going out and getting candy and, and icky stuff for themselves to eat, they collect canned goods for the Austin Food Bank, uh, you know, for the homeless and disadvantaged and what have you. And uh, so last last year was just a spur of the moment and uh, yeah. was very successful. So this year, Karen's really trying to organize it. That's I think they're starting that at about 6.30. I believe so. I'm not yeah. Yeah, around that time. Early, yet. and then afterwards is the Halloween party at, at Russell and Jenny's. Yeah. So um, if you're in the group and you want to talk to Karen about being part of that, uh, that ought to be good. I mean, it doesn't all have to be in that neighborhood, too. You, we can get, like, other ACA members doing yeah. trick or canning. Yeah, where yeah. They yeah. Live. basically we're asking that, you know, it, it would be nice if people who aren't able to go mm -hmm. trick or canning but show up to the Halloween party. Mm -hmm. If they have some extra canned goods, bring those along. Yeah. If you're coming to the lecture and you have some, bring them along. Yeah. But they got about 100 so, pounds of food last year. Yeah. So if we can get 200 pounds of canned food that, this year, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, great. So, and, and then, of course, the party will follow. Um, so that is, are, is uh, the Halloween plans for ACA. Uh, and hope everybody has a safe and fun Halloween, as, as always. But uh, 
I think that does it for announcements, except to, uh, again, remind everyone, uh, this is a live call-in show, ACA's live call-in show. We've been on the air about six and a half years. And if this is your very first time to ever see us, if you're channel surfing and you you were stopped cold by our banner or what have you, uh, um, and you want to talk about um, athe- atheists and atheism and religion and, and what's atheism all about and what have you, well, um, you can do that. But there, we want to let you know that on our website at atheist-community.org, there is a fact page that we've put together uh, consisting of all of the most common questions, frequently asked questions that we've gotten from uh, viewers over the years. Uh, Just the basic stuff, you know, what's what's the difference between an atheist and an agnostic? Uh, What do atheists think about this or that? And that's on there at atheist-community.org if you want to go there as well. And there's a ton of other stuff on that website uh, about the group, Uh, lots of entertaining things to read. Uh, And, um, you know, there's Russell's incredible coverage of the uh, last month's uh, uh, school, school board, board hearings. hearings, yeah. And um, so uh, visit atheist-community.org, too. And uh, and then don't forget TV at atheist-community.org is your viewer feedback address. We, uh, we uh, you know, solicit feedback from callers uh, uh, and viewers every week, and we usually get to some pretty good stuff. Um, we got a really tri- – we have a regular viewer who always uh, um, writes us uh, – Craig, who is – if you're yeah. out there, hey – who always writes us a really terrific letter, kind of feeding back on and giving his views on everything uh, on the show, and yeah. sent us a really good one uh, last week. Because last week we had uh, on the program a uh, terrific guest. DJ Grothy was here from out of town. He was uh, representing the Center for Inquiry, yep. which is, I think, probably the largest and uh, most well-financed and well-organized uh, organization for uh, the promotion of reason and science and applying the scientific method to all areas of life. Um, uh-huh. You know, including, uh, you know, cherished religious beliefs and sacred cows that maybe it's time we, you know, yep. kind of put in the closet and moved on. Yeah. And um, so he was, he was an excellent guest. And uh, yeah. hopefully we'll have... Yeah, he was good on the show. He gave an excellent lecture the morning of mm-hmm. for the group and yeah. Yeah, all around good guy. So, uh, all right. So that's... Uh, so TV at atheist-community.org, don't forget, is our viewer feedback address if you want to write us in because, like I said, this live call-in show... And we never manage to get around to taking all the calls that we get. There's usually a couple people hanging on the line uh, when we wrap up. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, I think it's time for the news. Okay. So let's... All right. Uh, a little late on the news front this week, but I do have a few things to go over. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one, start off with something a little bit oddball. Uh, Cedar City, Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a story we could have had a couple weeks ago when we were bumped off by the Mormons. Mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> they got their comeuppance. Um, <laughs> sounds like a morning DJ prank, but employees at KSUB say a technical glitch caused the radio station to air Mormon Apostle M. Russell Ballard repeating the word sex over and over during a speech okay. <laughs> at the church's general conference two weeks ago. Uh, Ballard, whose October 4th address was broadcast live by the AM News Talk, news talk station, was warning listeners about the pernicious evil permeating the entertainment media. The two hosts Uh said an overload of data jammed the station's buffer system, which allowed KSUB to air coverage (laughs) on a 24-second delay. The overload jammed the audio feed akin to a record skipping just as Ballard reached the word sex in his speech. (laughs) Okay. It was sex, 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 sex for 24 (laughs) seconds. Before somebody finally caught it and stopped it and fixed the glitch. Oh, that's great. So, <laughs> I would uh, love to know what the actual sentence was. Unfortunately, it's not in here. Uh, well, you um, know, I don't think anyone I'm, even remembered after that. No, 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 <laughs> probably not. But, uh, but mm. yes, we need more of that at ACAC. You know, that's... So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, we get enough technical glitches here. Yeah, I don't think we need one more. But uh, so. well, that's sort of like... Now, that's the kind of thing... Um, you know, when it happens by accident, you know, have to, you know, you know, when things, when things happen by accident or by remarkable coincidence or yeah. what have you, that uh, tend to look good for Christians. Yeah. What do they usually say? Like, of course, it was an act of... It's a miracle, Exactly. Right? But it's, when something like this, you know, you have to wonder, maybe, maybe some demon was possessing exactly. the, uh, the uh, control panel. Exactly. Of the, uh, well, I don't think Mormons are quite, you'd re- respond to those things quite in the way that like... Yeah, yeah know, fundamentalist Christians yeah, would. Like, uh, but... but uh, uh, but it's still kind but of But yeah, they, they've got to have a couple of eyebrows raised over this one. Well, so. You know, it's the sort of thing, I remember in the 80s, right, when, uh, you know, Congress was first starting to come down on, you know, like dirty rock lyrics and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they had like Tipper Gore and her little gang. Um, which just goes to prove that, you know, it's not just far-right Republicans who are, you know, contem- yeah. you know contemptuous of 
free speech if it you know yeah. if, if they think they can gain political advantage. Uh, but um, in any event, uh, what what one of the people, one of the musicians who testified before those hearings okay. was Frank Zappa. Okay. You know, the late Frank Zappa. Uh, and uh, after, you know, the hearings, right, he took the uh, recording from the hearings and he took basically all of, like, the congressmen and Tipper Gore and everybody uh, and, and, and took, like, all the filthiest words that they oh. <laughs> were saying from, you know, from, from yeah. like, all the stuff they were talking about and the lyrics they were recording everything. And he, and he mixed it all into this song. Wow. Right. So what he did was he took the voices of people who didn't like the fact that there were folks saying dirty words on rock records yeah. and made them say dirty words on rock yeah. records, which was, uh, you know, but that's deliberate. But <laughs> So when something like this happens so by accident, that's even, that's even yeah. more fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think, you know, if we believed in an afterlife, we would think somewhere Frank is smiling down yeah. on us and, and, and on this little situation. But, boy, the Mormons and sex, we could, we could get in, you know, why do we always keep coming back to this? Yeah, they're, they're, all, they're fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll do a little more news, and then maybe if we can... Okay, if we have the, time, we'll jump back to that. Because yeah. actually, Arlo touches on that in the most recent newsletter, which we didn't mention. Oh. Uh, news, new newsletter is out today. On the October? For our group, yep. Okay. And uh, I, so I guess a PDF will be going up on the website, too. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. It was emailed out this morning. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Arlo actually goes into that a little bit there. Um, he talks about that. Okay. So, but oh, anyway, good. Okay. before that, something completely different. Um... Uh, we have discussed a couple times on the show Mel Gibson's upcoming movie, The Passion of Christ. Uh-huh. Um, well, apparently there has been a final decree on the movie. Oh. Um, by the higher ups, the higher ups being God himself. Oh. Wow. Um, uh, Mash, Mash, Macalini, an assistant director on Mel Gibson's The Passion of Christ, was nicknamed Lightning Boy. After lightning struck his umbrella during filming in a hilltop town of Matera, Italy. Uh, he got light burns on the tips of his fingers. Okay. A few months later, while the crew was on a remote location a few hours from Rome, a storm rolled in, and Mascellini, again carrying an umbrella, mm-hmm. didn't learn, was standing beside Jim, was standing beside the star of the movie, Jim uh, Cavazel, on top of the hill. Uh, both Cavazel and Mashin. Macanelli got struck this time. Mm. The bolt hit both uh, both of them, and one of the forks actually went off, and it was it forked and it hit both of them. So Yikes. poor old uh, Macalini got hit twice <laughs> while working mm. on this movie about the Passion of Christ, and the star of it got hit once. So, so that's the, so that's some that's uh, a, you know some singeing yeah. reviews. <laughs> yeah, you would I mean, you would uh, isn't it to a Christian isn't that like isn't like being struck by lightning sort of the ultimate sign of God's disapproval? <laughs> I mean, isn't that Well, he didn't get it the first time around. He kept going, so it came down yeah. to okay, fine. Now I got to get both of you. Yeah. So. so you have to wonder why they're not thinking, "Hmm, okay, well, I guess God himself doesn't like our movie. He doesn't yeah, really approve." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, well. <laughs> So no, no, nobody's hurt. Yeah. Um, good well, that's thing. a good thing, but strange. But, uh, right? I mean, but yeah, both struck by lightning. So. Yeah, so, you know, I'd read that. I'd actually read that that uh, piece last week when it was in the news, and I think it's funny how um, I'm surprised at the uh, silence of guys like Robertson and Allwell. Yeah. About the occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you know Mel Gibson being a traditional Catholic, yeah. and uh, you know how the uh, there there does tend to be that friction. Yeah, between uh, Catholics and and uh, you know fundamentalist Protestants uh, yeah. here in America. You, I mean, fundies like Robertson and they're real just. Well, I don't know about specifically about Robertson, but I, I have you know read a lot of fundamentalist Christian websites where you know they they equate the Vatican with just a bunch of you know, baby out, out evil, yeah, baby eating Satan yeah. worshippers or something. Yeah. I mean, it's really just yeah. the worst thing. Yeah. In the world, and so yeah. I, I, I am a little surprised that I haven't heard more, um, you know, gloating uproar exactly from, uh, you know, from the uh, yeah. you know, peanut gallery on that one. But there is God coming down, delivering yeah. His wrath upon your movie. Yeah. So, so, hmm. so you're more of the pernicious evil. I think Mel got a evil. distribution deal with him finally. Yes, so. yes, I did see something about that. Yeah. So I think yes. the movie's gonna do better than people anticipate just because of all this pre-release hype. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the phrase yeah. in the in the in the business is that there is no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. You know, so I think it, it'll it'll pl- play strongly. I'm actually quite eager to see it. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm fascinated by. It. I mean, you know, definitely I, an artistic movie, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and Mel Gibson, I think, is a good filmmaker. Yeah, you know, and uh, I wish he'd get around to doing Mad Max Four, but then that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that uh, you know, I, I think it is going to be um, certainly one that's t- going to be talked about more. Yeah, you know, I 
I am not, you know, it's, it's interesting to see the, you know, it's kind of the interfaith squabbles that are going on about this, too, because it's of a different, you know, it's the first time we've really had this sort of controversy around a Jesus movie since Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. Which was another movie made by a Catholic. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know about Jesus and, and then didn't really settle well with uh, the Protestants and, and the mainstream. Okay. Yeah. So, so this could be, a, could be interesting. Okay, now something a little bit more down to earth. Um, this is a story about children, mostly in the Congo. Um, basically, across Congo, it says thousands of girls and boys as young as four years old are accused by their families of witchcraft. They are abused, abandoned, and in most cases, scarred for life. In a, in a society that still believes that evil spirits bring misfortune, Children are easy to blame for lost jobs, failed crops, and other economic and personal problems. But two factors are worsening the problem. The, the disruption of family life caused by the Congo's ongoing civil war, and the surge in churches whose preachers rail against Satan and witches as the cause of all woes. Um, essentially, again, you've got, you've got a country where there's a lot of superstition, a lot of beliefs and strange things like that. And when all of a sudden you've got this new kid around and all of a sudden that kind of coincides with me losing my job or whatever, hmm. um, it's easy to kind of link the two together and say that that child must be bringing some kind of evil into the family. Well, um, I, I guess if you are predisposed to that kind of irrationalism. Well, education is probably not exactly not on the forefront here. In the, yeah, in so, that country. So, yeah. Which is terrible. So, yeah. Um, really I mean, they have had lots of things here. Uh um, one child, they decided to get rid of her demons uh, they thought were inside her. Her step-uncle poured acid over her head, face, and right arm and almost killed her. Jesus Christ. Um, like I say, a lot, of her, a lot of them are just plain old abandoned and abused. And again, these are, these are young kids uh, that this happens to. Well, that's horrible. But you know, um, I mean, we have seen, not this bad, but scattered yeah. examples of exactly this sort of behavior among the fringe religious in this country, too. Yeah. You know, we, we have had cases of, you know, you just have, like, the faith-healing believers, right? Yeah. The parents who are exactly. like... Exactly. Yeah. Now, that's, you know, they, they actually well, they actually think they're doing their children good by yeah. not taking them doctor to doctors to, yeah. you know, cure them of very common ailments, and then the kids die, yeah. right? Uh, so I guess that means it's God's will. But we have also, uh, we've, we have seen cases similar to uh, <laughs> this ghastly exorcism thing that yeah. you, uh, you just uh, mentioned... Um, there was some was it, the boy who was wrapped head to toe, yeah, in exactly. duct taped, exactly, and and suffocated to death. And yeah, I forget what that was. was he he was, he was being punished. Was, that was their form of punishment. But what what did he? I, I, I was he wasn't the autistic kid. No, the autistic. No, 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 no. The autistic kid was the one that they just basically beat to death. Well, a different. I, th a different I, I don't think they actually beat him. I think they they just held him down essentially until he suffocated. Yeah, but, but they, well, they crushed his chest, right? Um. Something like yeah. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was a physical, you know, <clears throat> beating yeah. type thing. It, well, it, more of a you know excessive restraint. Yeah. Well, but, it was um, excessive enough to kill him. Yeah. So that's about as yeah. You know, yeah. Just and even as, and even here in Austin, we had it. Uh, it mm -hmm. was about a year and a half. I think it was July of last year. Okay. Um, they had that preacher, the youth pastor. Yeah, two guys. Um, yeah, it was the youth pastor and somebody close to him. I can't remember exact details on it off my head, but uh. But yeah, they had the kid who was cheating on his Bible test, and mm -hmm. so they took him aside and they sh they actually tied him down to a bed, I think, and they beat him with tree branches yeah. until his kidneys failed. Yeah, damn, damn, so. they killed, him. and then they drove him home, right? And yeah, like, and like dumped him, clunk. Well, and, uh, they know, dumped him and for... said the parents should continue this for another two hours. Yeah, which is just like so. you know insane, and you wonder like how can any human being yeah. adopt these kinds of insane? Well, it's. You know, again, we don't want to imply that this is just the natural end result of being religious, but no, of course uh, not. it's not. I mean, most religious parents wouldn't do this in a million years. But of course. the general point is that when you freely adopt irrational belief systems, yeah. there's really, I mean, what grounds do you have? I mean, yeah. not to yeah. essentially justify it is your any rational kind of thought. behavior. Yeah. It's the rational thought that stops you from getting to points like this. Precisely. It is your rational mind taking over, saying, "No, I don't believe that God wants me to kill my children so that they uh -huh. go to heaven." So that they yeah. go to heaven. There's just something not right here. So, yeah. And irrationalism, so. on the other hand, is, is it seems to be a thing that you can use to justify any sort of creepy, you know, creepy weird yeah. behavior. 
Um, you know, whether, whether it's something that you do or whether it's just something that happens around you in your environment, you know, it's like, you know, what happens? Uh, an airplane crashes, yeah. you know, killing everyone on board except a little girl. Yeah. yeah. It's a miracle. Yep. Right. You know, it's it, this yeah. weird sort of a way that they kind of, you know, you'll protect the belief system yeah. to this irrational thought. Yeah, pretty much anything. Yeah. I mean, I think there was an example on the email list a long time ago saying a plane crashes and everybody dies. Well, it's a miracle that it didn't go down in the city. Yeah, it, you didn't, know, it didn't hit a house. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's just, you know, mm. regardless of the situation, you can still find it. You know, it didn't blow up the entire planet, therefore mm. it's a miracle. So. See, like, you would think, like, uh, you know, if, uh, it, you know, there might be some people thinking that when, uh, you know, Jim Caviezel in the <clears throat> AD on Mel Gibson's movie, they get zapped yeah. by lightning, but they weren't injured. So exactly. it's a miracle. Exactly. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> well, a miracle would have been, like, for Not them. being struck by lightning, yeah. first off. <laughs> yeah, it's not a miracle when a really like nasty thing yeah. is not quite as nasty as it could have been. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's not a miracle. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> so anyway. So. Okay. What more do we have? And we'll before we put the phone number up to okay. start taking calls. Yep, this is just gonna be a really quick um this is actually an editorial type thing. Okay. Uh talking about basically how it's almost become fashionable these days to doubt Darwinism and the theory of evolution and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, basically, this is talking about someone in Britain who's just obviously knows the facts a little bit about what's going on in the world and where science stands and where evolution stands, stuff like that. But whenever he asks other people, do you doubt Darwinism? Do you believe in evolution and such? And they're like, well, you know, we've seen a lot of problems with it. And there are a lot of books out there, you know, spouting this issue and that issue. And, well, they don't really make any sense. Um until recently, to question Darwinism was to admit to being either a religious nut or just plain thick. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, and frankly, it's still that way. Exactly. You know, despite whatever sort of you exactly. know, political correctness it has adopted. Yeah. yeah. Um, the current confusion is the result of a decade of campaigning by a group of Christian academics who work as a think tank called the Discovery Institute in mm-hmm. Seattle. Mm-hmm. Their guiding principle, what they call intelligent design theory, or ID, is a sophisticated version of Thomas Aquinas' argument from design. Uh Um, And basically it just goes off to say that, you know, there are lots and lots and lots of examples of evolution being a lot more well-founded in science than just kind of idea. Uh Um, And uh, it it talks about Behe, it talks about uh, Philip E. Johnson, Uh um, and lots of people in here, and... And again, just saying and, that. And again, Discovery Institute was the organization that we were we were rattling sabers with. Exactly. Uh, last month at the uh, State Board of Education exactly. hearings, and it which should they be noted. mentioned in here. Yeah, and it should be noted, right, that uh, you know the that dishonesty is this group's stock and trade. Right? Oh yeah. It is. Uh, it is a lot. Is a lot more than fashionable what they're doing. These folks have a very deliberate political agenda. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is all part of a broader thing yeah. uh, that involves you know introducing. Uh, you know, politicizing religion yeah. more and more uh, in, in such a way that people just become more and more comfortable with the idea of just having, like, you know, officially sanctioned one yeah. belief system over others. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. science being a threat to these yeah. belief systems, you know, as they perceive it, yeah. uh, is a thing that has to then be demonized and, and of course, misrepresented. Yeah. And, and we saw all their shenanigans at work yeah, yeah. Uh, at this hearing. And if you go to our website... At atheist-community.org, you can read, like, I think some of the most detailed coverage that you will find yeah. on the hearings last month. And, and really going into detail of exactly the sort of disingenuousness that uh, the Discovery Institute employs. Yeah. So this, this is a, del- it's, yeah. it's more than just a fashion that's cropping up. This is the yeah. result, as the article points out, of a deliberate disinformation campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and and it's because, not about science. It's yeah, about I mean, shoring up this oh, yeah. belief system that, that its proponents want to politicize. Yeah. It's the whole, about theocracy. The whole intelligent design thing is really just a lazy incarnation mm-hmm. of turning it all into Christian schools that yeah. teach the Bible pure and simple. Mm-hmm. They realize that they can't do that for church-state separation reasons. They're never going to fly with that mm-hmm. straight off. So instead, what they did was say, okay, Come fine. It wasn't our, Jesus. Yeah. It was God that created the world. Mm-hmm. Well, even that's a little bit too much, and they can't get that through. Yeah. So or, they back they off a say, little bit more. Yeah. And say, okay, it was some intelligent design that created the world. Yeah. And now what they really had at the last hearing wasn't so much that an intelligent design created the world, but that Darwinism and evolution have lots of problems with it. And we just want those addressed. Exactly. We just want those problems addressed. That's yeah. all. 
once we get and and essentially, I mean, it's it's obvious where they're going to go after that. Assuming, yeah. let's say that they get those problems in, well, then in two years they'll be able to say, okay, ha ha, we have an answer. It's called intelligent design. Mm-hmm. Two years later, that intelligence design is God. Yeah. Two years later, God is Jesus yeah. Christ. It's the wedge strategy. So, which, exactly. Which, which is crazy because, you know, it, it's like they, they've made all this documentation public. I know. And yet they still think <laughs> that they website. can get out there and <laughs> pretend that they're not up to what they're really up to. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, which, uh, and, um, you know, I read many passages from the wedge strategy document on, you know, uh, on during my presentation at the hearings, and uh, some other people referred to it too. And, and again, just an example of the disingenuousness of the Discovery Institute, right, is that they are, well, let's not say disingenuousness, let's say bald-faced lies, yeah. because that's what they are. Yeah. Let's be honest about it. You know, they'll say something like, oh, we're not talking about God. Did you hear any of us mention God? I didn't mention God. Did you yeah. mention God? We're not yeah. talking about God. It's like, give me a break. A, you're all a bunch of fundamentalist Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you're not talking about God, who is this intelligent designer that you think you're talking about? Are you, as fundamentalist Christians, suggesting that there is some other universe creating entity out there apart from your God? Are they that supporting might be the, the intelligent designer? Yes. Are they supporting the Raelians? Okay. That aliens put us here? So it's so trans, the dishonesty is so transparent. Yeah. That is just amazing that they actually, you know, that anybody but their own little people in their own little clique are falling for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but no one is falling for it. And what we were seeing at these school yeah. board hearings are uh, scientists have finally realized you know, science made a big mistake. When when uh, creationism first started, uh, really kind of kicking in, yeah. which is they just thought, "Oh, pshaw!" You know, these are a bunch of crackpots, <laughs> and you know we can we yeah. can ignore them and dismiss them. And that was a major tactical mistake, yeah. uh, because of course um, the majority of the public in in our in our country in our society, uh, the majority of the public are scientifically illiterate. Oh yeah. Okay. But most of them go to church, so yeah. the pulpits became this avenue to spread this misinformation about science. Yeah. And um, science one day looked up and suddenly realized, uh oh, you know, I mean, there are there are people out there getting misinformation, yeah. and uh, and it, it's not that there's anything wrong with casting doubt upon a prevailing scientific theory. That is what science is all about. Of course, okay, that's fine. But are you know are the are the criticisms coming from science from yeah. a scientific perspective, or are they coming from a politicized religious perspective. And clearly yeah. the latter case is true in, in where the intelligent design movement is concerned. So f- finally science has yeah. rallied. And what we had at this school board hearing was the majority of the speakers were pro-science. We had uh, Steven Weinberg, Nobel laureate, yep. <laughs> very eloquent presentation. And, um, you know, uh, it, but again, you can go ahead. We, we've already talked about this extensively on our show. Yeah. So if you want to kind of see what really went on that day, uh, you can, again, you can visit our website, go to the past events page, and you can you read very detailed coverage. You can read excerpts of people's speeches. You can listen to the speeches. Yeah. There's audio clips, photographs. Um, but, you know, I think science has finally learned its lesson that, uh, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, that's kooky. We can blow it off because, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's... Uh, Unfortunately, you can't. There, there are kooks, and then there are well-financed, organized <laughs> people with an agenda. You know, um, yeah. and here, the, the, this is all part of politicizing their religious beliefs. Yeah, you know, it's it's part of the same movement that is out there supporting Roy Moore, and and yeah. all of that sort of thing. So yeah. it's a broad. There's a broad spectrum of, uh, yeah. you know, fundamentalism that is is em- they're emboldened because you know of the Bush administration and what have you. So yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Speaking of Roy Moore, I didn't get the entire story. But uh, they're going to have an ethics hearing on, you know, what he did and oh. you know, how should be, he should be held accountable and such. And he tried to get five of the eight members kicked off of that hearing. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so. um, find the three that agree with me. They're OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you know, when, when you know, you, you sneak this thing in the building into the building in the middle of the night. I know. It, okay. It's kind of giving the credence that yeah. you know what you're doing isn't completely on the up and up. Yeah. Because why can't you do it at noon? So maybe there's like ethical so, problems there, you know. Yeah. And, and he knows it. I mean, maybe. He know, well, he knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, course, he snuck course. it in in the middle of the night uh, with with help from, you know, his pals from, you know, D. James Kennedy and, the, exactly. the, and, and uh, Coral Ridge Ministries. That's the one, yeah. They yeah. videotaped this whole thing, right? And then... Uh, the Coral Ridge Ministries, right from the get-go, started selling these videotapes exactly. with the, the money from the videotape sales going into a legal defense fund for him. So he knew immediately what he was doing, and yeah. he was expecting the legal challenge. Yeah. You know, and, and, and he, this is so, and, but he decided to pretty much thumb his nose at the law anyway. Yeah. You know, so, and, and, and I've heard, uh, you know, uh, you know, Christians say, oh, he was, he's just a private citizen decorating the rotunda. Oh. Give me a break. Box. I mean, you know. <laughs> 
What's uh, how much <laughs> self delusion do you have to like pile on? Exactly. You know, before exactly. it just uh, really begins to crust over. So yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just it. It really is funny. I mean, you know, they, uh, you know, the theocrats unfortunately just they cannot argue for their position. Uh, it seems without engaging in yeah. uh, just out and out uh, dishonesty and disinformation. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. quiet. Yeah. So. All right, well, we're going to uh, start taking some calls, and uh, 477-2288, that's the number to call us live, and we're going to start with, uh... hey, Jimmy, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? We're all right. Um, I just wanted to mention a recent incident, I'm sure that was of interest to you, you folks, um, this general, this evangelical general. That Boykin, yes, on. Boykin. I don't know if you've talked about him yet today or on the show, but um, I just turned, I just, I just turned you on. Have you been talking about his... his we haven't yet, but uh, we can. Yeah. We actually talked uh, about One thing that concerned me was that in the whole aftermath of that, when everybody pretty much recognized he was way out of line and that was inappropriate and it, mm-hmm. wrong for him to, him to do, um, but mostly they were sort of discussing it from a diplomatic standpoint. They had offended you mm-hmm. know, mo- the Muslim world, yeah. but nobody, had, nobody criticized it from the standpoint of his you know, outrageous statements that we're hearing more and more of everywhere, that this is, quote, a Christian country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think all of these politicians, we're going to have a real, it's going to come down to with this, with this uh, Ten Commandments thing in Alabama and everything. It, it really is going to come down to a showdown about whether that whether this is a Christian country or not. And I'm sorry to say that a lot of people believe it is. Yeah, yeah. I know, because, yeah. the, again, this this very effective agitprop coming from the pulpit, uh, and, uh, yeah. and and it's a very uh, well-financed and, and funded movement. Oh, uh, to to politicize point, religion that I think ties in very important, uh, very much with this that people neglect a lot, which is on the First Amendment aspect mm-hmm. of this, that the Supreme Court has said uh, clearly mm-hmm. that that it's not only freedom of religion, but mm-hmm. it is freedom from religion. Yeah. yeah, and that part is not emphasized enough. Yeah. People, we we are have the right to not have religion. Forced upon us at football games, at uh, yeah. the beginning of every public meeting, it is we are supposed to be free from religion as well as have the choice of different religions. We should, we have to have the choice of no religion. All yeah, it's yeah. the conscience yeah. of the individual, which yeah. the theocrats just don't care about. You know, yeah. they they think that uh, they either make the majoritarian argument, which is, well, you know, it's um, you know most people are Christians, so why don't all you non Christians just shut up, yeah, just okay. suck it up, and you're uh, so. you know because you're all second class citizens anyway. Um, but it's this whole idea, and, and it's this whole idea of uh, you know why is it that the evangelicals feel that they need to have you know this official government endorsement of their belief system? Yeah. And I think that it's it's not just the belief system; it's not just the endorsement of the belief system. But they think that it, it is ultimately about you know, a political power. Yeah. In the big sphere, right? I mean, they they want you know what they what they really want more and more of in America is is a theocratic system uh where you know because they they use terms like culture war yeah you know yeah. and they they feel like oh no there's this battle for america's soul and we've got to fight <laughs> it and you know ultimately in the end right it really is all about them getting themselves in position of of, of power yeah. and this is the sort of rhetoric that they use and they use it very effectively yeah. to kind of frighten the public into supporting these ideas uh but on you know w- but when you ask the average person very calmly you know the, the 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 core question which is at the root of all church state separation issues which is do you think your religious beliefs are any of the government's business? Uh, I think we lost our caller. Thanks. Anyway, uh, caller, um, do you think that your religion is any of the government's business? Yeah. You know, pr- pretty much anyone will say, well, no. I'm like, well, there it is. That's it right there. That is church-state separation. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And if the shoe were on the other foot, right? I mean, if it was a bunch of Christians at, uh, you know, at a high school football game and some Buddhists stood up and started singing a chant. Yeah. You know, these people, you know, yeah. they'd blow a gasket. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but it, it, as long as it's 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 my religion, it's okay. Yeah. Well, they had that survey just you know a week or so ago saying mm-hmm. that most Americans support mm-hmm. uh, the idea of the faith-based initiatives and stuff like that, assuming that it's a Christian group yeah. that's you know doing the soup kitchen or whatever. Yeah. If it's a Muslim group that's doing it, then the percentage and support goes way the frick down. Yeah. And so yeah, as long as it's my religion, then mm-hmm. it's okay. Everybody else, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. So, I mean, it's obvious what they want. Yeah. So, so. anyway, uh, I think Greg is line yep. two. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Bob? Hello. Yeah, hey, how you doing? All hey. right, what's up? Um, so, do you think this atheist uh, belief is uh, the right way or what? Well, atheists are defined by what we don't believe. We don't believe in okay, any gods. so you don't believe in anything? 
anything? We don't believe in any gods. God. Any that's, god. Yeah. yeah, that's what atheism is all about. Uh, who created you? Uh, my mom and dad. Oh, who created them? Uh, their moms and their dads. See, it's, it's, yeah, I yeah, guess it's you never got back. this little talk. Yeah. Hey, no, 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 I'm a, yeah. a novice to this. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so anything else? Uh, I'm, no, I, wanna, I want you to buy me on this. Buy well, you? We we're, want not, to... we're not here to, to sell our ideas or anything like that. Oh, well, come it's, on, it's, sell me on it. No, it's, it's to open up eyes and just get a different point of view out there. Yeah. Uh, they got a lot of, they got. What about Jesus? What, it says Jesus free right there on that little piggy you got in front. Yeah, that's a fish, and it's oh, because we don't believe. Yeah, we don't believe that Jesus was divine either. Okay. Yeah. So, no, 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 no. Hey. Let's yeah. Keep... All right. And yeah, we don't believe in gods because yeah. there's no evidence. Okay. Yeah. That's our excuse. No Anything else? Evidence. That's right. Yep. Uh, I think you need to sober up and call back. All right. <laughs> what a loser, <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> down the crack. Pipe. Yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. And we're waiting on our next caller. So. so. <laughs> I mean, at least don't slur your words if you're going to, I mean, come on. We, we ought to at least be able to understand you. Yeah. Uh, so. So, uh, yeah, the, um, well, the Boykin thing is fascinating because what happened was, have you noticed how there wasn't really, well, of course, the right-wing conservative columnists and people like that are rushing to his defense, which I think is you know, completely missing the point. Like, oh, well, this is freedom of speech and expression. And he's like... No, I mean, he made a statement in his capacity as this yeah. military leader, right? Yeah. The Bush administration already, and they should be tremendously embarrassed about this, and oh, they, yeah. have tried, they have tried to distance themselves from it some, which I think is praiseworthy, yeah. right? Okay, but, um, but they haven't really come down and said, look, this is, this is completely out of line, yeah. you know, which, of course, they would do if it were any Democrat. But, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, when, when Bush went out of his way, uh, or at least tried to, you know, during before the whole war in Iraq to say, look, this is not, we're not at war. Yeah. We're not at war about, uh, yeah, you know, this is this not is, a faith war. We're yeah, not we're, at war against Islam. Yeah, that's right. So, we're not, we're not yeah. out there. It, this isn't Christians versus Islam. This isn't a, this isn't a war against a faith. Yeah. Uh, you know, this we think Muslims are terrorists. Yeah. We think Muslims are great. And you know, this is all about terrorism or anything. And then yeah. this general gets up in front of a huge cheering crowd of, yeah. of lunatics, apparently yeah. in his says, general outfit. Yeah, and says our enemy is Satan, and and yep. our God is real, and their God is an yeah. idol, and our everything God like that. is bigger than his God. Yeah, and you just and, and and then and people wonder like, hmm, why does the rest of the world hate America's guts? <laughs> you know, you gotta. It's yeah, like, let's give this some thought. You know, I mean, this is like not exactly sound political policy to sit yeah. there and basically you know tell you know. Uh, like what, uh, an, uh, one billion people, uh, you yeah. know, uh, one sixth of the world's population, you know, your our God's real and yours is an idol, and this is not this is not good PR. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you would have think that they would have have been a little bit more forceful, or yeah. they should have been a little bit more forceful, and um, in saying that the general was wrong. Of course, his his apology was all a you know just so artificial. It was just yeah. I mean, yeah. they're always going to be because yeah. they know exactly what they're saying. Yeah. But again, this is this is when the facade is lifted, and you kind of see what's really you know yeah. the man behind the curtain with all of this you know with yeah. you know with what this current current what is motivating this current attitude of conservatism yeah. in the country. Yeah. Okay. So ah, Dave is on two. Okay. Hey, you're on the air. What's hey, Martin. On? How you doing? We're good. Uh, excuse me. I have a terrible cold. Um, That's fine. Listen, I just want to ask you a quick question about D. James Kennedy. Uh, I, yeah. I occasionally listen to. To Kixel, just just basically to keep an eye on these people. And um, yeah, uh, did, is he the author of this book? Um, oh, it's out right now. What if America was a Christian country again? Have you heard of this at all? No, I haven't. But it wouldn't. That sounds like something he would write. It, this, to me, this is. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> listen to them talk about this. It's unbelievably frightening. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. apparently these people will, from the evidence we have, believe in anything. So. They're buying this book, and uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a Christian radio station I'm listening to. It's Christians calling in, but um, it, this is a huge seller, and mm -hmm. basically, it, it looks to me like, you know, the the brown shirts are gathering to uh, put the rest of us in pens or something. <laughs> well, I uh, certainly hope that it would not be that insane. But certainly, what is going on is that, um, and when uh, DJ Guthrie was on the show last week, we we, we talked about this in a similar vein. Um, imagine that you're just a regular person, right? Just your average, yeah. everyday, church-going Christian guy, 
Okay. And you don't really think about this stuff too much. Yeah. Okay. You don't really think about, you know, what's going on in the broader political sphere and what have you. And then uh, someone, you know, a minister, someone whom you have come to respect just by virtue of going to your church or, you know, may, or, you know or whether or not you belong to D. James Kennedy's church, you know, you're, you know that your pastor likes yeah. him. And, and it is this big community that's developed. Suddenly, these authority figures that you have come to respect and trust start hitting you with all of this fear rhetoric. Yeah. They start telling you that there is this massive campaign, you know, by the evil forces of godlessness and, and yeah. you know, horrible stuff to... Secular humanism. Yeah, to, uh, to, to undermine you and to tear your family apart and and to take your beliefs away from you, and none of which has any basis in reality, but it's yeah. tremendous. If you've never heard this stuff before, if you're just, you know, your regular person, and suddenly you get bombarded with this fear rhetoric, it's going to affect you. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this book that you mentioned by Kennedy, which I'm, you know, uh, which, you know, I'm sure is out there, and uh, a lot of other uh, books, like uh, Tim LaHaye had one uh, called Mind Siege. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know Tim LaHaye is you know the, the whole all the whole Left Behind novels are the, the they're the best selling novels in publishing history. Um, you know uh, people do tend to respond to this kind of thing. You know yeah. it is very easy to kind of manipulate and 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 propagandize folks uh, when they've you know never really been aware of any sort of problem before. Yeah. If you know if they trust you, just like oh. But you didn't realize what, you know, they're the horrible secular people yeah. are trying to do to you. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, and it is frightening because um, well-meaning folks who don't know any better are kind of being suckered into this. And it's hard to kind of, you know, re-educate them into, look, settle down. You know, all that's happening here is that, you know, we're trying to make sure that everything's fair for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to kind of, you know, to, to deprogram them yeah. from from that sort of, um, from that kind of rhetoric and that kind of propaganda, to, yeah. for lack of, uh, you know, yeah. You know any any uh, more subtle term? Well, uh, that's all. That's absolutely true. And you know, it's <clears throat> the politicizing is becoming is becoming. Uh, you know, it, it, at one point it's sort of you know basically politics, and at some point it becomes personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people are they're you know they're tying it to homosexuality and liberalism. I mean, I know you know all this, but, I, but basically what I'm saying is I think all of us at some point need to mobilize because it's becoming. Mm -hmm. Pretty real, pretty powerful. I yeah. mean, look at look how far it's reached. Ashcroft, Bush, yeah. you know, it's really getting serious. I I think that at some point, well, I, I know your show is for this, and you guys are doing your part, but you know, we cannot just sit by and let this happen. No, that's yeah. true, and I think that uh, you, you you are seeing, um, you know, the secular Americans and people who are just kind of tired of the bullying. Uh, they are doing that, and you know, what with um, you know, the the uh, there's a godless Americans march on Washington. You know, last fall, or actually, it was about a year ago. And, and but even even in terms of atheists are kind of for the first time really kind of getting organized. Yeah. And but and it's not just atheists either, though. It is it is uh, the more liberal Christians, the more uh, tolerant Christians, like uh, Reverend Barry Lynn. Yeah. Who uh, have become very, very active with uh, organizations like Americans United for Separation of Church and State, and this organization is actually mostly Christian. Uh, but these are Christians who don't want the government sticking their nose in religion right. because they understand what is wrong with that. So it isn't just, it's not just that atheists are becoming mobilized and it's not just that the scientific community has finally woken up to the threat to science education, what have you. But there are, what you don't hear about so much in the news are, you know, the, the more mainstream Christians who are just like, look, let us worship, leave us alone. <laughs> you know, we don't want to be out there, you know, uh, you know you know, turning America into some sort of big theocratic, you know, Christian Iran. That's not what it's for. You know, this is all about the, you know, the conscience and, you know, the faith is an individual matter. Um, this, it is starting, you know, the, the, the upswell is, is starting and, and we can just sort of try to keep the momentum going and just get out there delivering the message that counters the misinformation, you right. know. That's I, I really that's like, true. I, that would be wonderful to think I mean, I, I'm sure you're more in touch with the movement than I am, but it's great to hear that uh -huh. at least somebody else knows this is happening. Uh, just, just a really quick anecdote. Uh, yeah. Actually, I bought that unsaved shirt that you wear occasionally. Yes. The, uh, <laughs> right. I, I, wore, I wore this in H-E-B uh, a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. I wear it around all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. And someone uh, a couple aisles away started screaming and pointing at me, mockery, mockery. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. 
And then he follows me around for a couple aisles. Awesome! Me. Wow. It was wow. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah these... I, I actually had somebody at work, I wore that shirt to work one day, and as they passed me, I said, come see me sometime, we can change that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and that's not even a particularly <laughs> offensive shirt. No. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, uh, boy, what if I walked, you know, what if we walked around there in our the ACA shirts that say, like, 10 reasons why beer's better than Jesus or yeah. whatever they were? Well, I, mean, I was yeah. actually, I was looking that's, at, um, I was know. listening to the nonprofits yesterday, yeah. and on the website, they have a link <laughs> to products, uh, and one of the shirts was... Uh, uh, I mean, in, in big type, this was not, you know, a small little label. It was big type. Jesus is just pretend. Okay. And, I mean, it was a whole bunch of stuff like that. I mean, it was, wow. you know, a little more blatant than I typically wear out, you yeah. know, out shopping. I and, mean, you know, I don't <laughs> – that, that kind of stuff can be fun, right? But, you know, I don't think that – you know, it's not like, okay, we all need to go out there and, and the, the way to counter this is to start, like, making fun of religion and religious yeah, people. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, that stuff is amusing, but it kind of ought to be, like, in its place, right? I think yeah. overall, you know, the healthiest thing is to have the open dialogue and, and just inform people, look, you're, what you're being told, this is a little bit paranoid. Here's, a, here's all that's going on. Yeah. You're fine. No one wants to shut your church down. Yeah. No one wants to tell you you can't believe in Jesus anymore. No one, you know, wants to tell you that you can't hang a cross on your front door. We just want to make sure that, you know, there's... The government's not being unfair. You know, we want to make sure that no one's getting, uh, you know, unfair treatment over others. We want to make sure that no other group is being uh, unfairly disenfranchised, yeah, yeah. you know, unlike others. You know, we want to make sure that it's, it's you know, that, that the conscience of the individual, which is what religious belief ought to be all, be all about, yeah. that is what America is for. That's what, you know, the whole point of separation of church and state is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's about leaving, you know, it's what the founding fathers wanted. We got to leave these personal decisions up to you. Yeah. You know, so, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can uh, poke in front of religion can be fun, but really, ultimately, if you do a little too much of that, that's just going to make, yeah. you know, people are going to get the wrong idea, and they're so just going to get more defensive. <laughs> and then that will feed into these kind of paranoid fantasies of yeah. D. James Kennedy and other people. It's like, there, you see, all they want to do is, you know, they're, they're bad people, and they just want to say horrible stuff about us. No, no, it's not like that. It's not like yeah. that. Let's but, uh, <laughs> hey, we appreciate your uh, call, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Um, Jason, I think, is next. Hey, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, man. How you doing? We're good. What's up? Um, I'm uh, not really too familiar with anything atheist. I was actually just flipping to the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to know, like, um, as far as y'all not believing in any gods whatsoever, uh, mm -hmm. like, I mean, where do you think that, uh, like, do y'all believe in a soul or anything or just... Well, if... All here or... Yeah. Right. If, if, if by soul you're referring to some sort of supernatural entity in our body that like can exist outside our body when we die and what have you and things like that. No, I don't, I don't believe in those. Cause I don't, again, I don't think there's any evidence for anything supernatural. Is there, is, you know, believe in afterlife either? Or, or, uh, I would like for there to be one, but I'm afraid I, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you would, you would like for there to be one. Or? It, would, it would be nice if we, you know, didn't die, but you know, the reality is that we do. And so, you know, what's important is to make our lives meaningful during the time that we're here. And, um, you know, it's, it, uh, again, if, if there's ever, if there's ever any evidence, any good solid evidence that uh, we go on and we live another life after we leave this body, then I'll be the first guy to give that a big thumbs up. But right now, it's just, you know, it's, that's what religion does. You know, it's, it's a belief that religion instills to take away people's very natural fear of death. You know, any living thing that can, that's self-aware has this, you know, feeling of nervousness about the fact that, you know, one day you're going to be dead. And so religion has, you know, through creating the belief in the afterlife, has found a way to deal with the fear of death. So that's really what that is. Okay. And it's understandable why people would respond to that, too, you know. Yeah, I was just, I mean, I was just curious. I mean, I, I yeah. know nothing about atheist beliefs. I mean, as yeah. far as race, I mean, I, basically what I've heard is atheists don't believe in gods, and they're pretty anti-gods. I mean, you guys don't seem like you're totally against religion as far as letting people believe in that. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we want, we we th we believe in individual conscience. Yeah, I mean, there's a yeah. lot of people out there that believe in religion and go to church every week, and they're perfectly good people, and and hey, no no real problem with them. Yeah, it's just that when you open the door to religion, it's potential that you can open the door to other things too. Just like the story that I had earlier about um, people in the Congo, they you know there's a lot of religion and superstition and stuff over there, and they go around killing kids because of it. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah, where that's, things that's go crazy. a bit too far. Religion can definitely do that too. Exactly, you know, it it opens the door, and so that's what we're just kind of being guard, you know, being yeah. careful about. And so we think that having, you know, being so. able to just you know, have open discussion about these issues is the best way to handle exactly what we think are irrational beliefs. You know, you don't just uh, you know attack people and criticize them. What you say, you sit them down, and you say, look, here's here's how we think, and here's why we think the way we think, yeah. and that's you know that's what makes America great. You know, free society. 
Yeah, and I just want to point out, I totally agree with you guys about the, as far as keeping, like, Bush and Ashcroft, this whole Christian kind of yeah. evangelistic thing. I don't know exactly what they're trying to do. I mean, I'm not totally yeah. Christian myself, but, I mean, yeah. it does seem at times like they are trying to push yeah. kind of like a, a Christian sort of thing on the rest of the world. And that's totally, yeah. I mean, that's not what, the right kind of thing to do. You know, it's kinda, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are free to believe what you want to believe. That is fine. But if you, the minute you start thinking, hey, I, I can be a government official and I can use my power as a government official to impose my beliefs on the rest of the population, no matter whether, you know, whether they care about it or not. Now that's wrong. That's, and that's, that's not American. Yeah. That's un-American. I know. So. I just wanted to call and just kind of give some information. So okay, well, appreciate it. Great out here. I'll take it easy. Hey, you okay. take it easy too. Thanks take care. All right, well, that's a good guy. Uh, and Sam has been waiting on line three very patiently. Hey, you're on the air. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I can agree. This isn't about religion. You know, I think uh, from the first time caveman stepped out of his cave, mm -hmm. looked up the sky, saw a shooting star, and said, "Hell, I don't know. I guess it was a god." Mm -hmm. You know. War, uh, wars have been caused by religion. Sure. In fact, probably the majority of them have been caused by religion. And even though it may not be the root cause of this, it's one of the elements. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you there. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's certainly it is. It's about the religion. But when you when you, uh, you what you have to consider is that to a religious fundamentalist, the religion is everything. You know, they they don't really separate that aspect of their lives from other aspects of their lives. Um, a lot of mainstream Christians, a lot of members are other, uh, of other religions, they can do that. They're like, my beliefs are, are, are they're dear to me, and they're, they're part of my personal experience, and they're my business, and I don't want to get out there shoving it down everyone else's throat. I just want to be who I am, and, and that's fine. But to a religious fundamentalist, the, nothing, the beliefs are not separate from anything else in their lives. This is why, and, and this is why you start, you're starting to see, uh, you know, more and more of these phenomena of where you, they're just, uh, Christians are out there, um, openly proselytizing and well which is a free speech right to do but again just to have that approach means that you know you think that there is some sort of entitlement you know to just go out there and and get in people's faces with it whether they want you to or not yeah. you know freedom of speech does not equal freedom to force people to listen to you yeah. which is a detail that i think a lot of folks miss you know so uh, yeah i mean most of us we can separate certain aspects of our lives and i think most religious people can can you know, their religion can be a personal thing. They internalize it. It's pre precious to them. But a fundamentalist and somebody who is uh, who is really out there, you know, trying to push for theocracy like Roy Moore. And, and yeah. I, I think to you know, I think Ashcroft is, although he's, you know, trying to be more subtle about it. Yeah. You know, there there's no separation there. I mean, when you have Ashcroft getting out in front of this, you know, speaking to uh, who's at Bob Jones University or something, yeah. commencement address, and he says, you know, to these people. Our, our, our soon-to-be attorney general, America has no king but Jesus. Okay. Yeah. A, that's factually wrong. Okay. <laughs> We're not a theocracy. Yeah. We're not a monarchy. We don't have kings. Yeah. And guess what? You know, not everyone in America is a Christian, nor are they compelled to be. Yeah. You are entitled to choose your own belief system or lack thereof in this country. And it's just, it's an extremely arrogant statement yeah. for a government official to make that kind of statement. But it's the kind of statement you make when you are a fundamentalist who cannot separate your beliefs from any other aspect of your life. Yeah. So. Well, it, you know, if religion isn't an element, then <coughs> what do they call this? The Seinfeld War because it's all about nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. folks. I appreciate you. Hey, appreciate your calling. input. Thanks. Okay. Um, Michael is on one. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, I have a quick question for you. Yes, sir. Um, now, is one of your primary tenets or what, what you believe, is it, is, it an, is it evolutionarily driven? I mean, is, that, is the Darwinian theory, is that something that you believe as a fact? Or do you still uh, realize that that is a, a, a scientific theory? Okay. Well, okay. Um, you want to go? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just want to clear up the terms, perhaps. Um, first off, just really quick, kind of off topic in a sense, but atheist is lack of a belief in a god. Period. It stops there. Now, other things typically go hand in hand with that, um, and that's kind of what you're going at here, more the evolution side of things. Now, is evolution a fact, a theory, a good idea, or whatever? Um, when science calls something a theory, which it does with evolution, it's something that's backed up by mountains and mountains and mountains of evidence. A hypothesis is just a good idea. Um, so there is a lot of evidence out there backing up evolution. Now, the theory part of it, um, in, in layman's terms, I guess, is the theory of, is 
evolution through the theory of natural selection, essentially. Or punctuated equilibrium. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as far as science is concerned, you know, people who actually study it and know what they're talking about, evolution happened, period. It's a fact. We know it. There's no question. Now, the actual mechanics behind it, again, punctuated equal, equal, punctuate evolution, um, you know, slow changes over time, whatever, that's still in debate as to exactly what caused it, how quick it happened, stuff like that. Now, learning new but stuff evolution all the time. happened. Yeah, I mean, well, I agree with you. That's, that, yeah. I yeah. totally agree with you. I, I think that there's a difference that, that a lot of people don't understand. It's that yeah. evolutionary change between two phyla or two different classifications of animals, mm -hmm. I think the fact or the empirical evidence between species to species mm -hmm. is is a little you know is a little misconceptualized. I think that we as a species we can evolve you know hair color, skin tone. Yeah. We can, and I believe that those evolutionary those kind of changes within a lineage occur. Mm -hmm. But it, it's hard for me to um, you know I, I study a, a tremendous amount of evolutionary um, mm -hmm. zoology up in um, uh, in college and. And it was hard for me to really get a firm grasp on changes between. So you're talking about macroevolution versus micro, right? right. You're, you're talking about the macroevolution versus micro. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, there has been quite a lot of, of evolution, uh, of evidence. I'm sorry, getting my ev words confused. So there is quite a lot of evidence uh, out there to, uh, to explain how it is that macroevolutionary change can occur. Um, uh, you have to remember that there's nothing really all that sp special about macroevolution. Macroevolution is just the same process of microevolution. It's just on a larger scale. Um, you might want to visit the talkorigins.org uh, web archive uh, because there are quite a few papers there. In fact, there's a whole fact section on, uh, on the different evidences for macroevolution and how yeah. we know what those evidences are. Um, I printed up a bunch of it, and I printed up like one section of it, and it took like it's it's like thirty pages, and the whole it amounts to more than a hundred pages worth of material. But it's it's out there, and if if you'd like to kind of understand where science stands on that aspect of evolution, you might want to give that a read. Um, so yeah, um, but uh, another thing that too, the, a mistake that some creationists make is that uh, you know the, the phrase Darwinian or Darwinism. Um, you know, been, been reading some more, uh, you know, some, some literature from like the National Center for Science Education and, and, and they, they make a, a very important point that I haven't heard made very, uh, very often. And that is that we kind of need to tell people, okay, first off, if you're using the term Darwinian, you're a little bit out of yeah. date already because, of course, Darwin sort of came up with the first viable evidence-based theory of evolution that yeah. had been seen. And then it was subsequent discoveries that have helped to shore that up. So, for example, Darwin didn't understand anything about genetics. Yeah. I mean, genes, DNA hadn't been discovered yet. When DNA was discovered, that was like a big boost. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, uh, f but uh, like, as far as natural selection is concerned, that could be one aspect of how it is that organisms and species evolve. But there's, uh, there are other aspects that are just as important, if not more so, that n very few people talk that much about. Yeah. Well, uh, because I, I... the focus is on Darwin. For example, genetic drift yeah. is a big component in how... Uh, life forms evolve, and you don't really hear the creationists going after that that much because they're all obsessed with this big guy with a beard, you know, <laughs> Darwin. So, um, anyway, you were saying. Well, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, we're getting away from the, the fact. What I was trying to, I was the point I was trying to make is that a scientific theory, if 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 one is to hold a scientific theory as a basis for for what they believe in, and they've also Got to choose, they, they have to make the choice, am I going to follow all those scientific stipulations? And the, the case in point is the second law of therm, thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. um, everything goes from order to disorder. In a closed system. Yeah, that, uh, yeah that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if a person was to take that and, and, and hold that theory to be true, then the whole basis for evolution, in my mind, and what I've been taught is that it kind of eradicates itself. Ex but except for the fact yeah. that the second law of thermodynamics applies to closed systems, and the Earth, the biosphere of Earth, is not a closed system. So the second law of thermodynamics just mm. doesn't apply. There's a lot of other particles coming in from space, and also just well, the there's, this, there's one, this big thing called the sun. <laughs> exactly. That, that's a big part of it. The sun yeah. provides a lot of energy to the Earth, and yeah. and again, that is what drives a lot of you know early. Yeah. Uh, 
chemistry, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, I, I see how you can. I, yeah. I, again, I, again, have a have a look at the the, the talk origins of facts on the uh, on the website there at the bottom of your screen because a lot of those questions can be addressed. And again, those are bio, we're not biologists; those guys are. So, uh, you know, have a look at that. And if you got have any more questions, uh, yeah, um, you know, feel free to give us a call back. Okay, we need to get to our next guy. So, uh, but we appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Colin. Okay, Valwin. Is that the? Uh, is that? I hope I pronounce that right. Hi, did I pronounce your name right? Uh, yeah, that's 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 right. Bowen. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, German. Okay. Um, I want you to elaborate a little bit more on how Darwinism was. Uh, I mean, you know how you were just speaking about Darwinism was just like the tip of the iceberg. You didn't know anything about genetics or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's as far as supporting evidence, um, lack of a God that. It was just like the tip of the iceberg. Okay, I'm not um, quite sure what you're getting. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. No, really no. Well, uh, I didn't really understand about the Darwinism and how. Oh, okay, okay. To elaborate a little bit more. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, well, well, first off, it was never Darwin's like intent to like prove there was no God. Okay, he, in fact, he was when he started his all his scientific travels, he was actually training to to be. I mean, he was getting ready to go into the seminary, so he was a religious man. Um, but uh, it was what, just what denomination was uh, it I, Christian or something? Well, yeah, he was a Christian. He was going into the seminary. I guess it would have been Church of England or whatever. But yeah. in, in any event, um, so he he never I mean he never undertook his scientific studies for that purpose. Uh, but so, so evolution doesn't really you know address the 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 concept of God or gods or deities. It just talks about how it is that you know in in biology you get like simplicity moving towards complexity. Right, like how how is it that we get you know we, how, how do how do life forms get from here you know to here, um, and it's like I said so so Darwin Darwin's not the first guy in history to come up with this idea called evolution that well maybe you know stuff changes. Um, there were people before him there were there were uh, but but they didn't have good evidence backing up their theories and they had a lot of conclusions that were just wrong like guys like Lamarck you know yeah. they came up with a whole bunch of ideas that. Seemed good at the time, but they just weren't the right ideas. Darwin was the first guy who actually came up with a good body of evidence to kind of support his claims. And it got science sort of, you know, it, it woke scientists up and they finally started taking the ideas seriously. And they just built on it uh, years later. Now, DNA wasn't discovered until into the 20th century. And when that happened and we could look at, like, uh, you know, organisms on a genetic level, a lot of what those discoveries did was to confirm many of the ideas that uh, that Darwin came up with, but it added a whole a new dimension to it that that he didn't know anything about. So he didn't know anything about DNA. So he didn't know anything about how like genetic drift uh, contributes to you know living things evolving into more advanced living things. He didn't know anything about that. But in like say in, in, in all the years since Darwin, there has been more science and better science to kind of you know back up yeah. some of his ideas. Some you know some ideas were thrown out when they weren't good, and others were kept and then built on. That's how science works. But uh, so. but essentially, um, it was a, Darwin. It was a theory, and all the other people that were thinking the same thing. It was a theory. They didn't have any scientific evidence. Well, yeah. Well, you have to well, remember. And it's, te technically, that was a hypothesis. Yeah. According according to science. Darwin came up with a hypothesis that animals change over time due to, you know, their environment and genetic drift and, you know, whatever, yeah. basically but that kind of thing. As far as the science experiment with the hypothesis, he didn't have... Well, he did. I mean, like I said, he was, Darwin was the first guy to come up with a solid body of evidence to back up the idea of evolution. Yeah. Um, and and in, remember, in science, in, in everyday life, right, theory can just mean, oh, well, I have this idea. But in science, it doesn't mean that. In science, you have, there's like this hierarchy of, like, certainty. You know, like, how sure are you? You know, you've got an idea. How sure are you that it's true? Uh, you don't even get to call your idea theory in science until you've got a good, you know, double armful of evidence yeah. there to, to back it up. Gravity and electromagnetism are theories, according to science. Yeah. So um, we're pretty sure that they're going to be around for a while. So anyway, all we, the best we can do here on this show is just kind of give you a broad overview. But, you know, if you want to read, if you want to get the details, there's the website at the bottom of the screen. Just have a look, you know. Because okay. we're not biologists. I mean, you know. This uh, evolution is a is a biology topic. You know, <laughs> this is an atheism show. It's, it's not really about biology. Now, evolution comes up, you know, because a lot of atheists do support science, and we think that evolution is valid. So it, it comes up. But we're not we're not evolutionary biologists. We're not the experts. So, we, okay. and, and it, most people when they call us up and they have questions about that, we usually like to forward you to this website. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, did you know about the theory of the FBU? 
Back message. Uh, <laughs> okay. See, I got Dan. Okay, well, we'll see. Is that who's next? Dan, I think, is on three. Yeah. Hey, Hi. I, you're on the air. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I was just flipping through the channels and all right. Caught your show and uh, had a question in regards to, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you say you don't believe in a God. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've got a hang up there and I can't, I don't know, maybe you can help me through this. And I've read a lot of stuff in regards to it and whatnot, you know, as far as creation and is there a mm -hmm. creator, is there not a creator? Uh, and I think the thing that, that I've, that I look at is I look at all the complex design in this world. I look uh -huh. at the human eye. I look at the solar universe. I look at the stars, billions of stars, and just the complexity of all the design that surrounds us and just the enormity of it all that I look at it and I say to myself, you know, how can this just evolve or, you know, how, how can there not be a creator behind this design? And, Somebody once said to me, you know, or, 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 or explain it in this way, is like, you know, I mean, as far as like a, I don't know, a Big Bang Theory or whatever, and I'm not saying that you support that or whatever, but, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, believing that a, a, a tornado could go through a, a junkyard, and, and when it leaves the junkyard, it's left with a 747 yeah. now, Dan, in perfect condition. Okay, Dan, now do you, do you think that a tornado whipping through a junkyard and making a 747 is an accurate analogy to how evolution is supposed to work? No, but I think it's a... Well, wait a minute, it's, you it's don't... An, it's an argument for a creator. But, but wait a minute, you don't think that... A, a designer. Seven, oh, but, but my question was to you, do you think that... Uh, the the idea of a tornado whipping through a junkyard and coming up with a 747 is is an accurate analogy to the mechanisms of evolution. If that is that an accurate analogy, do you do you really think that's an accurate analogy? No, but I think it's okay. A, well, it's then a if you don't analogy think, to if creator you, versus non-creator. But right, but since but if it's not an accurate analogy to evolution, then it's it's a moot point to even try to make that comparison. I mean, the the, the whole idea of oh well the, 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 that that this stuff could arise through natural processes. Is similar to a tornado whipping through a junkyard and creating a 747. Look if you already, if you already admit that that is an inaccurate statement, no. then you should, uh, okay, go ahead and dispense with that idea because it's an inaccurate statement. That it, that has nothing to do with the processes of evolution, which um, have to do with a number of different factors. It's, it's all sorts of natural laws. You know, biology comes into play, environment. Um, it's an extremely complex subject. It is true. I mean, biology and, and evolution are extremely complex mechanisms. Okay, but they are driven by natural processes. And I, the, the answer to your questions, I think, will lie in studying these uh, these uh, sciences and what the sci what science really has to say. Because if you right. just go to creation as sources for your information, you're going to get information from a lot of folks who haven't really studied the stuff and are making a whole bunch of uh, misunderstandings about it. Well, I think yes, uh, I, I think you're right in that you've got to look at the scientific evidence and, mm -hmm. and, and what supports what. And one of the most compelling arguments that I've heard out there um, is, is a book called A Case for Christ. I'll leave no. trouble. Yes, read well, we've read it too, and we did it's not. It's incredible. It's uh, incredible. Okay, and let me. Just I, I didn't find. We did not find it that incredible. Yeah. Well, the evidence in there that supports Christ's uh, life and, and what he did. Okay, this support this or, 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 or argue this one point. Okay, and this is one of the strongest ones that I, I feel supports Jesus right. Christ. Lived, died, and did what he said he did. Lived the first. Well, life. first off, what's this? This doesn't have anything to do now with creation. We've kind of gotten away from that now. You're right, no, this is my second question. Okay. okay. And, th and that was in regards to, to, to the evidence for Christ, that the book by Lee Strobel. Okay, so what's, what's, the, what's the terrific well, point the he made? Well, the question is, you know, in, in, in that book, you know, you've got the disciples of Christ that all went to a martyr's death believing in what they saw. And? They died a martyr's death yep. for someone. Now, you don't die for a lie. You don't let, don't die for life. So if this guy did what he did, Dan, and he really was Christ, would you go to your death for a lie? Dan, no. Dan, well, Dan, did the September 11th terrorists die for a lie? Yeah. Well, then there you okay, go. Okay, you've just uh, all right. Let's move on now. You've <laughs> well, but they were misled. Uh, but you just said people don't die for no a lie, difference. and we just gave you an example of people who do die for a lie. So it is very com it is it. What about Japanese kamikaze pilots? Did they die for a lie? 
What about what about uh, what about suicide bombers in in the Middle East right now, bl- walking into pizza parlors in Jerusalem and blowing themselves up and killing? Are they dying for a lie? What about all the cults okay. out there where people kill themselves? People die for a lie all the time. Kill. What about the 500 witnesses who witnessed him do what he do? The miracles we, that he did. We have no who, evidence. Who of, else has done that? We have no Jesus evidence. Christ. We have no evidence of those 500 witnesses. What do you we, mean no evidence? We have the gospel. Bible. We have we have, we have Paul. One book. We have Paul who makes the claim that there are 500 witnesses. The best-selling book of all time that, that stood the test of time. Be, uh, the best Harry Potter is really good. On. Hang on. Okay, okay. God we trust. Okay, okay let's let's <laughs> let's let's stop. Okay, let's 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 deal with one falsehood at a time here. Okay. Falsehood. All right. Okay. There are okay. no. Okay. Give me one other source apart from the the scriptures that supports the idea that supports the claim that there were 500 witnesses to this miracle. One other historical source. There were plenty of documents. That Tell me again. Name one. Besides the Bible? Yes. Well, the Bible is a collection no. you, of resources. Name another books. one. It's not one book. It's a collection of books. Yeah. A collection of stories. Okay, about but Jesus na- life. I don't care about that. Name a source so outside the Bible. Name a source outside the Bible that supports this claim that there were 500 witnesses to America. Well, there's plenty of them out there, and I Give don't know the exact names and titles of them, but as, I've read as, about Okay, when you can name one, then and call us back and give us one. Uh, give, us, give us one yeah. historical documentation. Give us one example. Yeah. You know, give the guy that wrote Case for Christ, he was an atheist. Give us a and he well, went out there to disprove that, Christ. No, no, uh, and no. And interview didn't. these no, people. Man, I no, used to be a to Christian. Try and, and, it. and you know what? He turned his life over to Christ no. because of what no. he found out, the evidence. I think that's see, what Dan, you got to do. you got to look at no. the evidence yeah, for Christ. See, Dan, Dan, see, here's the thing, though. Okay. <laughs> 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 you see, do. You've got to look at the evidence Dan, out okay. there. And you've that, given no evidence but there's to support no, otherwise. That's yeah. right, because the, uh, you're, you're not, but you're not bringing us any evidence that is anything other than the Bible. And, of course, the Bible is going to make claims because it is the, it is the purpose of the Bible to convert people to this faith. Okay? But what about extra-biblical evidence? No, the purpose if there's of the Bible sort of, is, is if there's like any God's sort of extra plan bi- for our life, man. Any sort of extra-biblical evidence for these claims of miracles. There is no historical source outside the Bible that can be independently confirmed. This is the concept that you're not clear on. Independent confirmation of these claims. I mean, to say, oh, well, the Bible said it, so that means it must be true. Well, you know, the, that any, then you can apply that to any other source, okay? The, the, the holy book of the, the Raelians... Okay, it says, makes this one claim about aliens coming to earth. The Mormons have their holy book. Okay, the, the, the Hindus and the Muslims have their holy book, and they all just make these claims. No, are, you you saying know, that it's, it, are you saying that it's sufficient for a book simply to make a claim and then say, okay, that's all the evidence you need. It's a claim in a book. No, you've got to independently confirm those claims. And what I'm telling you is there's no independent confirmation of anything that Paul writes in the Bible saying there are 500 witnesses to a miracle. It's just in that scripture, and it's nowhere else. You know, so why you, should I take it as any more seriously well, than a legend? Okay, I, I know you weren't, you're trying to discount the Bible, but... If you're well, answer the question. Right, and, and, answer and, the and question. Look at the evidence that supports the historical. I am asking you for that evidence. Of the Bible. I am asking you for that evidence. Where is the evidence that can be independently confirmed? That is what I have been There's asking. There's lots of it. Give me an example so I can look at it. What is this independent com- well, confirmation? Well, I'd have to reference some articles and books and documents that I've read, but I don't have those off the top. Okay. Of my head. Well, then get them, and then we will talk back about that. Well, subject, okay. Now, okay? But, but, but look at all the no, wait, evidence. Wait. Give, give us the evidence. Yeah, Tell what us evidence. What, you stop telling us. You got to look at the evidence, and and then say I don't know what the evidence is. If you don't know what the evidence is, stop telling us to look at it. Yeah. Produce the evidence, and then we'll look at it. There's billions of evidence. Out Great. There. We Produce have... it, and we'll look at okay, it. Okay. Look. You know. I think first of all, you have to believe that there's a creator before you can even. Why? Believe okay. Why? 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 All right. Right. See. No. Okay. Why? Well, see here. No. Why? Why? Because why do I have to? Except yeah, life the fact, is meaningless with the, uh, without some meaning and purpose. We're not just no, no, no. I give my, I give my, made up from... That's, yeah, that's irrelevant. Okay. I give my life meaning. That, that has nothing to do with this. Until, with any claim that is ever made in history, mm-hmm. if there is no evidence or no good reason to believe it, then the smart thing to do is not believe it until there's evidence. Now, I do, that, I do that with, you know, gravity. There's no, no reason to believe in, you know, that all planets are sucking things towards them until you get some evidence. Well, there's evidence. There's at least a little piece of it. So it gives a little bit credence to back it up. Now, if you want to go all the way to that, there are universe-creating entities that are not, you know, any way physical, and they can do anything they want, and they love us all, and all this kind of stuff, then, again, I'm going to need some evidence. So far, I have seen absolutely none. And believe me when I say that I've looked. I have read lots and lots of books, read lots and lots of articles. There simply isn't any out there. What about biblical prophecy? What about it? There is none. 
Yeah, what do I mean? There is none. <laughs> what I know, they're, they're they are they are so before what are, even happened, and then it happens to back it up. Yeah, yeah. The Bible actually, is accurate, man. They are actually, incredibly, they are incredibly vague statements, sort of well, like sort of like Nostradamus. Yeah, um, that says, you know, in one day a leader will come and lead the people out of the land. Yeah. You can apply that to billions of different things that well, have happened over the history. There's, there's, there's also the fact calculations that, done that's, in that's, order to determine the accuracy of the Bible and biblical <laughs> prophecy. And the oh yeah, I'm sure they're accurate are like one to a billionth or something. It's, 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 it's incredible. Oh, wow. Well, I, it, that it, is yeah. incredible. Well, I, I tell you, it really, yeah, big numbers really impress me, I tell you. Yeah, um, here's the thing. You know, well, first off, I mean, you know, if you look at any sort of you know, biblical scholarship, we know that a great many of the prophecies in the Bible were in fact written after the events that they're supposed to prophesy. Yeah. And as for a lot of the rest of them, well, again, like you said, they can be interpreted any number of ways. Okay, Isaiah 7 does not, does not prophesy the coming of Christ. Yeah. Okay, um, and we know that we also know that a lot of what was going on, well, a lot of what was being written in biblical scriptures uh, that is supposed to be prophetic were, were in fact, the, the authors of those scriptures uh, writing about events of their day. They were editorializing and they were expressing their views on the events of their day. Right. That's a lot of what revolu- revelation is. And the revelation New York isn't about what Christ did to prove yeah. his validity of who he was. Uh-huh. Which well, again, which you've admitted you don't have other uh, you know independent evidence. No, for. There's, so there's, there's no point in talking about that. Independent people that, that that were there that experienced it multiple. Okay, so why aren't books that so were why aren't there into why, a collection called the Bible? Yeah, why didn't which Paul? Which was founded on? Why didn't Paul? Uh, <laughs> I mean, why it didn't, was. It is yeah, or not? Yeah, it, I, it, I, I don't I, even I mean, see that bit of fact. Of <laughs> well, it's not a fact, but it is yeah. a fact. That's why guys brought it over here. And that's where our country is found. They split from the Church of England no. to come over here. They didn't. They didn't come here to found a theocracy, though. No, they came here to found a country based upon God, and God no. we trust. Well, that's again, a theocracy. Yeah, which is which is a theocracy, and well, that's like not what they came not, here to found. Well, they, in God we trust was here, in God, like was, in God we trust again. You, again. Uh, but your ignorance is just comprehensive. You don't know <laughs> like anything about history. <laughs> you don't know anything about history. You don't know anything oh, about the hist- you don't know anything about the history of your you own do. religion. Well, yeah, okay. I've studied this stuff. You don't know anything about the history of your own Obviously, religion. You, you don't know how evidence deeper. works. You don't know how evidence works. You don't know how the scientific method works. Really? You pretty much don't know a whole lot of anything <laughs> except what you choose to believe well, based upon the premise that you got to start by believing there's a God, and then you work from there. But that's not how you do things, okay? I mean, well, that, you that's nothing, how, right? that's you, how you fundamentalism no is. That's how fundamentalism works, but that's not how you do. No, that's, that's not how, how you do evidence. That's not how you f- actually find out facts about stuff. That's basic okay? thinking. That's not fundamentalism. Uh, it's yeah. Basic thinking. <laughs> I don't think you understand basic thinking. Okay, but thanks a lot. We gotta go. Um, okay, who's wow, next? Steve. Yeah. Again, yeah, it's it's again. If you start from the premise, right, my invisible friend exists, yeah. then anything that you find is just going to shore up that premise yeah. that you started from, because that's what you want to believe, right? Um, so, again, and again, let, read through, uh, let me just, uh, I'll just, uh, come up with, uh, here it is, uh, from John Adams. Yeah. Regard- tr- now, now, just before you go into the quotes, regardless mm-hmm. of what the first couple people on a boat mm-hmm. came to America and what their plan was, yeah. what the founding fathers and the people who actually started this country, the mm-hmm. United States of America, whether they had the same ideas as the people on those boats or different ideas, they're the ones who won. It is true that a lot of the people who came to the America originally were Christians. Of course they were. Yeah. I mean, that was the culture that you lived in. But yeah. did they come here to found an exclusively Christian nation? No. What they came here to found was a nation in which people could worship freely without government intrusion. Exactly. Because they had come from Europe and they saw exactly what sort of horrible stuff can happen yeah. when you mix government and religion. Yeah. And so this is why you get things like in uh, the Treaty of Tripoli, 1797, Article 11, this was signed by uh, John Adams, President John Adams at the time. The government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. And he goes on to say that the United States is not a Christian nation any more than it is a Jewish nation or a Mohammedan nation. And then uh, here in Thomas Paine, um, I'm actually getting back to to Jefferson. He says... uh, um, I consider the government of the United States as interdicted, 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 not sure. Well, by the con- well, prevented by the Constitution from meddling with religious institutions, their doctrines, disciplines, or exercises. And then he says uh, later on uh, in a letter to Major John Cartwright, the common law existed while the Anglo-Saxons were yet pagans at a time when they had never yet heard the name of Christ pronounced or knew that such a character had ever existed. So, of course, the laws that are um, 
that our country are based on, while Christianity absorbed a lot of those laws into their own system, they predated Christianity, of yeah. course, because Christianity got the laws from somewhere. So, um, yes, a lot of the original founding fathers, were they Christian? Sure. Did they come here to found a Christian nation based on the Bible? Well, no. Yeah. What they came here was to fi- found a free country yeah. where you could worship and not have the government looking over your shoulder and telling you what to do. Uh, but again, you know, I, I wouldn't expect uh, Dan to quite be able to know the difference. <laughs> Stephen, hi. Thanks for holding. Hello? Yes. Hi. Thanks for holding. You're on the air. Oh, um, I grew up in a Catholic family, and we were very religious. Mm-hmm. But now I'm beginning to question my faith as well as my sexuality. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to confront my family about this. My mom wants me to get confirmed into the Catholic Church, and I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that can be a tough one. Um, um. I don't. I don't know. I, my my experiences in this are a little bit less. I did grow up. Uh, it was very much very less religious, I guess, than most likely your family. I assume. Uh, my dad went to church every week and dragged me along. My mom didn't go, and so my mom was a little bit more on my side. Um, and basically, one day I just just said, you know, look, I I don't believe all this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a tough thing to have to come out to family and friends and whatnot. Um, as far as actual advice, it's more just, I would expect, uh, backing up your own position, learning and getting a really good idea why it is you believe what you believe or don't believe what you don't believe. Um, and being able to logically discuss that and back it up, um, just that they, just that they can see that you have thought, you have thought about it. It's not just a spur of the moment, you know, God, I hate my parents. I'm an atheist. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, yeah. which is what can happen to some yeah. people. And people who do it for that reason don't tend to stay atheists very long. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one because, uh, you know, these, the, the, the culture is so, <clears throat> has been so impregnated with these memes that it's, it's hard to yeah. kind of separate it. And, uh, I, yeah, I said, well, I'm, you know, we're not, I can't really, um, I, I still have not, uh, I think my parents know that I am a religious doubter, or that I am not religious, or that I have sort of abandoned what. But still uh, not sure that he hosts the <laughs> atheist yeah. experience. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. And, but the reason is, it's I know it's 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 tough for me to bring up to them, not because I have a problem with it, but, but because I know that my mother, yeah. in specifically, has been so indoctrinated with, for example, the doctrine of hell, you know, which I think is the most pernicious thing about the Christian belief system that. Um, for her to think that her little boy is going to hell is like traumatic, right? And so it would cause her all of this woe. And so that's just one more reason for me, I think, to, to um, hold these uh, you know, beliefs in disdain because they have unnecessarily introduced this ingredient into my mother's life that really upsets her for no reason, right? Because there's no reason to be upset by it. Um, I, but I suppose that, um, you know, it, so, so the reason for being reluctant to, to reveal who you really are to your family isn't really so much, uh, because you yourself have doubts or, or because you yourself aren't really comfortable with who you are and why you think what you think or, or, and again, or if you're, if, if you are, I, we have gay members in our group, but we don't happen to have one as a guest on the show today. So we can't talk uh, to the, to the whole sexuality question, although I'm sure that would be twice as difficult. Um, but, um, it, but it, it's not the, – the difficulty in, in revealing these things isn't really so much because of any discomfort you might feel. It's because, you, it's, it's because of worrying about upsetting the family member and being alienated from the family structure, right. which, which is important to everyone. And so, wow, um, I guess I, – I, I assume that the gay community probably has support groups for, for people who want to come out and don't know how. And so I guess the thing that you could maybe do there, if you really think that that's who you are, is to seek out some of those groups. And then if you're doubly worried about, you know, uh, also coming out as an atheist, maybe you can take some of the approaches that they might suggest and apply it there as well. You know, that it could work for both things. I don't know. Um, but I've just decided that, uh, you know, uh, religion is just, when I go home and I visit my parents, whom I'm very close to and we get along with, uh, religion just isn't a topic of discussion. I just don't bring it up, you know. Okay. Um, and, and it's for their sake. I just, I see no reason to introduce a thing into the environment that causes unnecessary upset, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, t- I, yeah, there's no easy answer. I wish that we could give you one. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. So look for some of those support groups, maybe. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling. Okay. Uh, we, I think we have time. All right, Josh, you're on the air. How you doing? We are okay. I just wanted to read y'all something real quick. It's a real good thing about religion here. Okay. All right. It's, it's uh, hello, hello, hello. This is the Lord God. Can you hear? How fire and damnation is what I've got for you down there. On earth I have my ambassadors, archbishop, viceroy, and pope. We'll bring you, we'll blind you with morality. You best abandon hope. We're telling you you better pray because you were born in sin. Right from the start, we'll blind, we'll put you in a cell, and then we'll lock you in. We sit in holy judgment, condemning those who stray. We offer our forgiveness, but first we'll make you pay. That is Steve Ignorant of Crass, and I worship. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, as old Satan doesn't exist either, okay? So <laughs> yeah. just to let you know. Um, you know, is, is sub substituting one form of irrationalism for another is still irrational. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kevin, hi. You're on the yeah. air? Hello. Thanks for holding. Quickly. quickly. Um, uh, the Big Bang, the math of the Big Bang, um, uh, do you agree that, that math shows that towards, that as time approaches zero, the universe takes the form of a zero-dimensional quantum fluctuation? Uh, we are not quantum physicists, so we couldn't give you an expert opinion on that. Okay, well, if... Es essentially in, what you're saying... In the creation of the universe, there is, if the universe was created from nothing, then wouldn't okay. have to take the form of a zero-dimensional quantum fluctuation. I, I don't know that uh, the Big Bang Theory postulates that the universe created from was created from nothing. I think that uh, but if, 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 if the, the universe, universe was a, well, if the, if the universe was a singularity, right? Yes. It, that, then it would by definition, universe. Yeah. It would have to be a singularity. But but a singularity isn't nothing. It's a point of infinite density. So there's something yes, there's something in the Big Bang to go of bang. Infinite this density at time zero, yeah. it would be a zero dimensional quantum fluctuation. Okay. How do you bridge the gap between a zero-dimensional quantum fluctuation and the existence of the entire universe? Well, I think that you would have to approach a cosmologist or a quantum physicist yeah. about that. We're not the experts. It's All getting, right. it's getting well, a bit more technical than, than yeah. we are nearly yeah. qualified to yeah. talk I mean, about. We're not, we, we're not qualified to give an expert opinion on that scientific topic, but there's a big university here in town and a big physics department in... in you know, you, have, you might All want right. to. Uh, well, maybe I should take it up with them then. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's a good question, and and but that's one that uh, we're just we're not the experts and couldn't really help you out on. All right. Uh, well, you well, how about Jeff? Does he know about the the quantum fluctuation theory more? Jeff. Mm. Jeff D. Oh, Jeff D. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I don't. I I tell you who might know. We have there's two people in our group. Uh, Russell Glasser, who is the host of the, or, or the co-host of the nonprofits, his father is a, a plasma physicist yep. who knows a thing or two about this. And then we have a member, Mark, mm. who is actually out of town, but if he comes back into town, we could ask him because he is, he is a quantum physicist and he actually co-wrote a graduate level textbook on, on quantum mechanics and quantum physics. And so, uh, um, if I bump into Mark, uh, or email him, I'll, he'll, I'll, that'll be the first thing I ask him. Okay. Definitely. Uh, well. All right. So, Thank uh, you. Th uh, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for and, uh, if I, I wish I had more time, but it's the end of the yeah. show. Okay, uh, but but it's a good question week. to end on. All right. All right. <laughs> Take care. Also, there I, um, yeah. there is a book that I know of uh, that I've I've been looking for. I'm not sure it's around and about, but uh, um, uh, of the reviews that I've read of it have been very strong. There's a fellow by the name of Tanner Edis, E D I S, <laughs> and he's written a book called The Ghost in the Universe, which uh, ex. I think explains many of the things that uh, Kevin was looking for. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the main point here is that you know one we're not really able to explain this stuff because we're not physicists. Yeah. Um, and two, uh, a lot of science just plain old doesn't know right now. Yeah. We're, we're looking into it, but we don't know for a fact exactly yeah. what happened. I we have a pretty good idea of what happened. You know, I just how saw... the universe got to where it is from about the size of a grapefruit <laughs> up till now. Yeah. But smaller than that, we're still a little bit... I just heard something even recently, and again, this is like, like many new scientific ideas, this, it's being hotly debated, but there is even now a new train of thought that says that um, the universe, it wasn't so much the Big Bang, but that the universe, was, it was more like the big... I don't even know what they're, if they've come up with a shorthand term for it. Yeah. But it was, it was all about the universe actually emerging through a black hole from another, our universe emerging through a black hole. Yeah. Um, 
Which again, and I think a lot of physicists are like, eh, I'm not sure about that. But you know, <laughs> but again, it's still so. There's any number of of, of ways that you can look at it. Yeah. But but in terms of the Big Bang, uh, what does support it are various notions like uh, you know, you can, the cosmic background radiation, yeah. redshift, the expanding universe, yeah. uh, things like that that support the idea that there was a. The Big Bang doesn't say anything about the creation of the universe per se. It has to do with the universe rapidly expanding. Yeah. From what it was to what it is now. Yeah. So, and what there was before that, we don't know. But thank you for joining us. TV at atheist-community.org. We're here next Sunday, 4.30. Uh, thanks a lot. See you then. Theists, we don't, we don't hate, hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're, you're wrong. wrong. Bye-bye. Take care.